Welcome to tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to cover an advanced pattern of searching through one or more passages from within a story. So we've previously seen how each passage represented within a Harlow is a data map. It has source, name, and has tags. We can also, using the metadata macro, add more name value pairs to a particular data map. But we know that we can access this data map using the passage macro. Now, as might be apparent, from passage singular, there might also be another way to access more than one passage instead of accessing only a single passage at the time. And this is what the macro passages does. Macro passages allows us to search through an entire story based on some condition, or as we've now learned within Harlow, some type of lambda. So we can use some type of search condition to look through all of the passages within a story and then get back an array. And we know an array is one of the data structures that Harlow provides for us. So we can look through a story, find a story, find the particular passage we want based on some search criteria, then get an array back and then do something with that array based on our knowledge of how arrays work within Harlow. So let me show you an example of how this might be incredibly useful based on our knowledge of other things within Harlow and particularly how passages are represented as data maps. So before looking at the start passage, I'm going to look at these three passages over here because they all have something in common. So this says you encounter a bandit, and notice it has a tag called quest, and this says you find a treasure, but it has a tag called quest, and this over here, merchant, you encounter a merchant, it has a tag called quest. So all three of these passages have the same tag. And we know that some tags have very specific meaning within Harlow, the startup tag, header tag, and footer tag. But we can also add other tags. Now, based on what I said much earlier in the video, there is a macro called passages, which allows us to look for certain things in a story. One of the things we can look for is what is part of the data map of a passage. That is its name, its source, and its tags. So because tags are represented as an array, we can check to see, hey, look through all the stories, that, or look through all the passages that are within this story, find some passages that have a particular tag. And this can be incredibly useful if we have very large stories or stories with many different passages. We can find some passages and do something with them. Or put another way, we can actually look for things and create a much more dynamic story. And that's what I've done in this example. So notice right here, I have quests. So I'm using the passages, plural, not passage for a single passage, but passages, plural, to look across an entire story for all passages matching some search criteria. So where its tag contains quest, which is what I set up right here. All of these passages, bandit, treasure, and merchant, all have the tag quest, lowercase where its tags contains quest. And this is the condition we're looking for. Look through the story, find me some passages. And this will be in quest. Right here I'm saying, okay, now get me the total length of this array using the ability to access right here length as part of this. And then get me from one to whatever this total number was. And then get me a random entry and then show me its corresponding source. Remembering, of course, that passages are represented as data maps, name, value, pairs. One of those names is source, the other one being name and tags, and of course we can add more. So this says, hey, search across the entire, the entire story, find me any passages that have the tag quest. Next, give me the length of that array you just created, which will be quest right here. Then. Get me right here a random number between one and the total within this. In other words, get me a, a number representing some position within that array from the starting position, one within Harlow, to its maximum length. And then this down here, using syntax with an array, get me some type of random quest within this based on that random entry. Pulled all together, all I have to do is add more passages with the corresponding tag quest, as many as I want, and this code right here will always find a random one within that. It will go through all of the passages that have quest, it will then select one out for me randomly, and then it will, right here, print its source, or in other words, display that corresponding passage. So if we play this, 
we get you find a treasure. If we play it again, we get you encounter a merchant. If we play it again, you encounter a bandit. And we could just keep going. And we would have a it would have a 33% chance, about a one-third chance of finding one of these things every single time. But I could add many, many more quests and not change this code at all. Because it works on the ability to find things based on attack. So all I'd have to do to create multiple quests right here, or equivalent things right here, just create many more passages. They all have the same tag. This tag will be found using the passages plural macro to search across the story finding some type of criteria, getting a random entry from that corresponding array. So lots of different things used within this video and talking through this example, but working on the idea that passages are represented as data maps internally within Harlow. So we can access things like its source. We can also, using the passages macro, search through an entire story for a particular criteria. In this case, where its tags, again, represent as a data map, its tags contain quests. So look through everything that's in this array, where its tags contains quest, which is part of how arrays work, get its length, get a random entry from this, show me a random entry, and finally, of course, again, down here showing this final entry. So lots of complicated things going on in this particular video, but again, circling back the idea, passages represented as data maps internally, and converting between our ability to get arrays, get the position of a particular entry within that array, and then show based on the data map its source. So really cool example of how we can use all the knowledge that we have within Harlow to create a much more dynamic story. All, of course, within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.